Hello, this is Professor Imler, and today we want to talk about the basics of categorical logic. So in categorical logic, we look at relations between groups or classes of things. And so we need to have a particular type of statements. Uh, so we might make, so for example, we might make the following types of claims. All tigers are dogs. All moons orbit planets. 60% of registered voters are moderates. No trees are worms. All of these statements, whether they are ridiculous, true, or false, we call them quantified categorical statements, or for short, categorical statements. So these are statements that make claims about a certain quantity, like all, some, or none of the members of a particular class or group. And so each categorical statement has to have four parts. The quantifier, the subject class, the predicate class, and what we call the copula. So the quantifier is the portion or how many of the class we're talking about. So those are things like 5%, some, none, a, all, those types of things. The subject class, well, that is the first class mentioned in the statement. So in the statement, some tigers are dogs. The first class of things that we talk about are tigers. So that is the subject class. We'll often, short, uh, we'll often have a shorthand of S when we talk about the subject class in like Venn diagrams and stuff. Then we have the predicate class, and that is the second class mentioned in our simple statement. So all, no, sorry, some tigers are dogs. Dogs would be the predicate class. And likewise, we abbreviate that with a P. And then we have the copula. Now copula might be a word that you've not used before, but all it means is it's some form of the verb to be. Copula just means like linking something together. And to be either links or says that there is not a link between two things. Uh, so it's some verb, sorry, some form of the verb to be that links the two classes together. So in that first one, some tigers are dogs, the copula is are. But what about that second statement we had talked about? All moons orbit planets. Where's the copula there? We might be tempted to say that orbit is the copula, but it, it's, it's really not. Um, it's actually part of the predicate class here. And what we need to realize is that sometimes we have to rewrite categorical statements from natural English into this logical format, this standardized format. We'll go into detail and have you do exercises on this a little bit later in the class. Uh, but for now, let's, let's look at that statement. All moons orbit planets. What we are really saying is that all moons, so that class, all of that class of things, they are things that orbit planets. So really, all moons orbit planets should be phrased so that we can do analysis. All moons are things that orbit planets. And then the copula is R. The predicate isn't just planets. It's things that orbit planets. OK, so the statement conveys the same information as the original statement, but it also makes each part of the categorical statement explicit. And when we're working with categorical logic, we want to make sure that our statements are explicit about those four parts of a categorical statement. In natural English, we can often, uh, depending on the sentence, leave the to be verb implied, and we can just link things together and the structure of the sentence in English assumes the a form of the verb to be, but you don't have to write it out. In the type of language we will be using in this class, we need to make those things written out and explicit. Okay, so let's talk about basic quantifiers. We need to begin our discussion of relations between two, category, two categories 
by standardizing our quantifiers. So again, natural language has uh, all manner of quantifiers. And that, this is wonderful, right? So most students come into a class misunderstanding the political philosophy of anarchism. Most is the quantifier there. Each and every computer has a central processing unit. Each and every is our quantifier there. 25% of Christians in the United States are evangelicals, right? 25% of is our quantifier. But whenever we go to do categorical logic, though that wide variety of types of quantifiers in natural English, they don't translate well to allowing us to do the type of uh, analysis of relations between categories. And so we need to standardize these things. So we're interested in how the categories relate, not necessarily yet the degree to which the categories overlap. So is it 25%, 85%? That's not what we're looking at at this stage of the game. Later on, we can introduce those types of logic, but right now we're, we're not, or sorry, those types of statements, but right now we're not at that place. So we need to abstract out the specifics of the degree that the categories overlap, and we reduce them down to three possibilities. No, right? So none of the members of one category and the other. All, all members of the category are being described, or some, at least one member. And again, some can mean 99% of the members, or it can mean just one single member. What's important here is that some is not all, it is not no, it's at least one. But we don't know exactly how many. So let's look at those uh, quantifiers from our earlier statements and see how we would standardize them. Right. So most, that's some. It's not all students, but it's at least one student. And it's not no students, it's at least one student. Okay, in the second statement, each and every. Well, that's all, because it's describing the entire class of computers, of that set of things. All of them have CPUs. And then finally, when it comes to the last statement, the percentage of Christians, it's 25%, so that's at least one. So it's not none of them, and it's not all of them. It's 25%, so that is some two. Okay. Now let's talk about universal versus particular. And this you might be able to pick up quite readily from what we've said so far. So universal and particular describe the scope of the categorical statements. And so the quantifiers all and no, those are universal in scope. Whereas the quantifier some and some in parentheses are not, they're particular quantifiers. Now that we have some standardized language about categorical statements, we can now look at the four possible types of categorical statements. Uh, and we'll call these moods. So we have four moods, A, B, I, and O. You're going to have to commit these to memory. They have basic forms. So mood A's basic form is all SRP. An example of that might be all basketballs are round. Where basketballs, the class of basketballs is S, the class of things that are round is P. Okay, so the E statement, no S are P. So we might say no dogs are tigers. With dogs being S, the subject class, and tigers being the predicate class. Okay, I statements. Some SRP. So here we get our first particular. So an example would be some dogs are yellow or more standardized some dogs are things that are yellow. And then finally we have mood O. Some S are not P. And so an example there uh, some dogs are not yellow. So those are the four moods. Now let's talk about quantity versus quality. 
So earlier we talked about the quantity of statements like all, no, or some. We can also talk about the quality of statements. And here the two types of qualities are negative and affirmative. The indicators of negative qualities are no, none, not. An example of this would be no dogs are reptiles. Then we have affirmative statements and those our indicator words are all or some. And so we can say all dogs are good boys or good girls. Okay, so now let's look at how mood and quality overlap. So mood A, all SRP, that's affirmative because we have all S's. We're talking about all S's. Mood E, no S R P. So that's negative. Mood I, some S, R, P, well that's affirmative. And then we have mood O statements, some S are not P, that's negative. So now we can talk about combining mood, quality, and quantity when it comes to these types of statements. So mood A, all S, R, P. The quality of that statement is affirmative. The quantity is universal. That's the scope. Then we have E mood statements. No S R P. Right? That's a negative quality, but it's also universal in scope. Then we have the I mood. Some S R P. That is also affirmative, just like the A mood. But here, the quantity is particular. We're not talking about the entire class. We're only talking about certain members of that class. Then we have mood O. Some S are not P. So this is a negative, right? Because we're talking about R not. But it's particular because we're talking about some. And so here you can have the combinations, different combinations of quality and quantity in the terms of the four possible moods of how two categories relate. Okay, so the last thing we want to talk about is distribution and categorical statements. Here it's easy to get tripped up just a little bit. So when we talk about distribution, we're referring to how the statement describes the subject and the predicate classes. So a particular statement could have the subject class distributed and not have the predicate class distributed, etc. So, uh, when we talk about uh, distribution, a term in a sentence is distributed if there is a claim being made about the entire class. Now it's tempting to pop into, well, is it universal or particular, but here we're zeroing in on the two classes. We're not talking about the statement in general. So mood A, an example, all dogs are mammals. We're talking about the entirety of the dog class, so that's distributed. And we're talking about the entirety of the class of mammals, so that's distributed. Mood E, an example would be no fish are mammals. The subject class is distributed. We're talking about the entire class of things that are fish. The predicate class is also distributed. We're talking about the entirety of the class of mammals. Mood I, an example, right? That's our some are statements. Some mammals are dogs. The subject class is not distributed. We're only talking about some of the members of the class of the things that are mammals. The predicate class is also not distributed. We're only talking about certain members. Certain members are, certain members are not. When it comes to mood O statements, though, we're tempted to follow the apparent emerging classes pattern that we've seen so far with the first ones, where universal statements have both classes distributed, and then when we looked at our first particular statement, both classes are not distributed. So we're tempted to say that for mood O, but when we look at it, and so here's an example, some mammals are not dogs. Well, the subject class certainly is not distributed because we're talking about some mammals. But upon closer analysis, the predicate class is distributed. We're actually 
making a claim about the entire predicate class, namely that the class of dogs, all of them, does exclude some mammals. Um, and so that's actually distributed. So it's important to not just think that, the, that there's a simple pattern here. Mood O statements break that pattern. Okay, so here's how we can talk about different types of the different moods that are categorical statements. Um, gives you some of the uh, ways that we can talk about them in the specific. What we're gonna do in the next lecture is start looking at, and this will be our kind of our major focus. Here we had to look at some terms and descriptions of these types of categorical statements. Uh, but in our next uh, section, we're gonna be talking about how can we uh, draw diagrams, Venn diagrams, you've probably heard of them. Uh, how can we draw them and actually make arguments with categorical statements? So. Uh, that's for next time. Uh, thank you, and talk to you later.